Hi, everybody. Um, I hope, can you hear me? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Hi. First of all, I'd like to thank the San Diego Design Week and Stacy for inviting uh, me and, and who I represent, which is a whole team of, of creative people from Tijuana uh, that, that have a, a purpose, uh, trying to, to change the, the aspects, not to change, actually to, to, to try to make a little bit better our built environment in the, in the border. Being locals, uh, uh, being born and raised in, in Playas de Tijuana, uh, pretty close from the, from the uh, Friendship Park. Uh, let me see if, can you see the full screen now? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna start uh, by, by talking a little bit about our, our design studio and why is it that we like to, to work here in Tijuana? Why, this, why is it so interesting for us being in the border and staying in the border? Uh, we are a, a, a small team of, of architects and, and let me, hold on, I'm getting a little bit nervous, okay? So I'll just start putting, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about, this, about our city, Tijuana, which was founded in 1889. Uh, our design studio uh, that was founded in 2004, even though I, I've worked from uh, earlier years from that in San Diego with other architects in, in, in the San Diego area. Uh, then I'll talk a little bit about the school that we founded in 2014 uh, that has a purpose also and, and today and we'll see in the in 20. 2024, I hope I can have something different for you too. It's, it's been like cycles, 10 year cycle. So, so I think I think these next four years are gonna be migrated into something different. Uh, I don't know exactly what it's been turning out to, but but I, I think I have the path that I, where I wanna go. Um, well, this is in front of, of, this is an artist, Richard Liu that did uh, this, this installation in the, where it used to be, where the, when there was no border in front of, of, of the Tijuana airport. Uh, and it's just an image and that I like to share because I like to compare to with the situation that we have right now uh, with the border, with the years passing by and being an architect in this area. Uh, in 1997, Marco Ramirez R uh, did this project in the border, exactly on the, in the, the separation between the two, the borderline, the two countries. So the Troy, Troy Caballo de Troya, uh, we have has lots of representation. And and for in in that at that time, that was when I was at school, at school at the, the university, working in uh, studying architecture. So for me, it was very very impacting to see these elements. Uh, and this artist doing this type of, of uh, expression in the border, even though uh, I've been a local, but, but as a kid, you don't really realize where you're standing until you start thinking about it. For you, for you everything looks normal. Everything looks uh, the way it should be because that's, that's how you started living. And then and it, and it's just like that. But now, uh, and now with this timing and this last year, it's been extremely uh, different in the past months, more different. So, so I think for us uh, living the border and for you, for you guys too also in San Diego, but in a different perspective for us right now, it's, it's a little bit different because uh, us as Mexicans, we can, cannot cross the, that border. And, and for me, the situation was that all my life I was able to cross. So, so there's lots of interesting things that we can talk about. Then in 2008, I was at that time, I was already working actually in, in San Diego uh, with other architects there, uh, crossing the border every day. And there is always art. Art. This was for the festival, the Insight, the Cannonball Man, Luis Munoz crossing the border and the migras <laughs> waiting on the, at the other side. <laughs> So I cannot see anybody. Let me see if I feel weird talking alone. 
Okay, so then Ana Teresa Fernandez uh, tried to erase the border with a painting in 2012. So, so if you look from the 80s to, to, to the 2000s, 2010, 2012, still always trying to, to erase it, try to, because, because at the end it's, it, it, it's, it becomes a, an area that it's all connected, so that it doesn't make that much sense for us but I guess for some people do. So this is it, this is like a, kind of like a, a doorway, a doorway to, instead of a, instead of a wall. And I'll talk about uh, architecture. Uh, I decided to call it with or without borders because at the end we are selling a service, a service that it can be, we can be designing any part of, in any part of the world and, and creating this, uh, this, buildings in, in every part of the world. So at the beginning of my career, I started working in, in our studio. We had a Fourth Avenue in, in downtown San Diego. And, and then we decided to go back, even though I studied in Tijuana, uh, for me, it always seems very interesting to be, to be working in the US. But at the same time, I, I thought that I was, I was betraying my country. So, so I decided to go back. And, but when I decided to go back to, to, to came to Tijuana and do my, my job here as an architect, I didn't, I didn't came here to work only in Tijuana. I wanted to be based in Tijuana, but, but do projects in, in different parts of the world. So, but at the same time, I wanted to, the, the, I wanted to see a change in the city because it's a city that it's since it's so close to the to the U.S., it's so easy for a, for a Mexican architect to earn three or four times what it can what they can earn in San Diego and in even living in Tijuana and paying Tijuana rent. So, so it's a very a lot of the talent uh, just flies. So that was one of the reasons that I I, I started my studio. It's the studio that we worked on, it always when they ask me how many people are, it's very complicated because it's. It always fluctuates. I mix the studio with this, the architecture school. Sometimes we are 10, 15, 20, depending. And, and, and also since we have a construction company uh, and I see the craft of the workers as part of the, the design because we try to design with what, what we can build. So at the end, the craft or the workers, they, they make decisions also for us to be able to make this easier to be built, to be built. So I, so I, sometimes we are a hundred, it depends. It depends on the time of, of, of the projects where we are. I'll show in this presentation, I know we have a, about an hour, right now we have 45 minutes. So I'll show a little images so that you can get an idea of what we do and where we do it and how we do it. Uh, but I'm not gonna get into the detail of the projects. This one is in, in Baja, this was in 2006 in, in, in Todos Santos. It's an amazing place close to Cabo San Lucas, between Cabo San Lucas and La Paz. And this, it's for a client from, for a client from LA actually, a French guy from LA that wanted to do a house for rentals and, and the other one for sale. So, so this type of projects, we, we get a lot. And I don't know how come we, we get into this type of, of projects that people that want to have a, a remote home, they call us because uh, this is this was the first one and, and and we always try to work with the material local materials in that case the materials that we decide to use for the construction was the materials that you could buy only in that town this very small town so we didn't believe that at the beginning we wanted to do prefabrication but then we thought it was more sensitive to to and, and sensible or sensitive to to get local workers uh, jobs instead of bringing materials from other places and not not giving the jobs to the locals because we thought that it was a need for the people of the town. So we decided the concept of the design uh, started with, uh, with using whatever we have on those two hardware stores. And with that, we, we work on everything. So it was very simple, CMU block, concrete, uh, Talavera tiles, metal, um, an iron worker that was the work in the town. And, and these are from, from uh, Palitos, uh, I don't know how, how we call it. <laughs> and then another thing we do, 
uh, on, on residential and, and commercial and every, all, all kinds of projects, we try to experiment with the materials. In this case, we are doing, uh, for example, buying four by eight sheets of, of, of regular uh, metal and, and cutting it, bending it, and doing this type of textures. And at the end, these are materials that are very durable, there are zero maintenance, they are very inexpensive, very original, and, and at the end, it becomes a, a good asset or something very good for the price because at the, at, it, it, it turns out in a, in a good cost and, and efficiency and efficiency. So, so that's one of the things that we like. Since we do, we do our own construction, we like to reuse, for example, this door was in this house that is a house in Mexico City, that, that it's a 1930s house and, and it has it has this tiles from that era and we demo from one area and reuse it in other areas and then the doors also but we will just like to like it, there was an art deco house and and we tried to uh, rep, not replicate but reuse the shapes of the art deco re study them a little bit and then do our own design with the handrails to mimic the the style of that time but in a modern way so so the, the stairs becomes like a structural elements also. And this column, for example, that you see the large one, it's the support for the stairs, but it doesn't look like a support specifically for the stairs it, because in the other, the stairs looks floating. If you see the corners, there are little, little connections. So I think uh, being a builder uh, and, 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 and having a good sense of aesthetics lets you do lots of things. And I consider myself a, a, a builder. So, so at some point of my life that I am right now, I, I can't, I'm, I'm a little bit tired about building and I like to design only, but I see that there is lots of decisions that you do in the process that makes the projects turn out the way you want it. And, and, and if you just design it as myself, I, I don't have that opportunity, that time of, 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 of thinking of the process so that I can do that, those changes. I don't know if I explain myself, but, but I think in the process of construction, there's lots of opportunity of changing materials, changing thicknesses, changing a lot of things. And that, that's, that's one of the reasons I decided to move back to, to Mexico and, and do my work here because it's very, in the US, the price we do in the US, you'll see that they are a little bit different because it, it works it works much different uh, you know that more than i do but it's but it's a, a, a everything is, is regulated and, and permit process you need to do it you cannot design and then get the permit here and here it's it's a little different uh, in some point of our life also we started to do development small developments here in the city to for rentals uh, and this is one of one of it. Uh, if you see the structure, the main main col main walls are concrete, but the rest it's a, a least a CMU block structures that are least expensive. But the the main volumes that you see in black, they're they're fiber cement. So so it becomes like a a play of numbers, a play of numbers to be able to be in, in cost. Uh, but at the end, not trying to to do our best in the design. So, so it's something that we like to play around in the construction to be able to make a, a, a affordable buildings. This is another project here in Tijuana. This is all concrete. This we got more burlist <laughs> and it's, this is the photos of the interior. Uh, we like always, maybe you see a line if in all the projects that I'm gonna show you, you'll see a line of design but we always try to experiment. Like we're using concrete, let's use with the, uh, boards, board forms. Then the, the one we're building now, it's all, all ply, uh, uh, plywood, but very, very smooth. So we, we try not to replicate, to re, we try to reinvent ourselves, but, but you'll see a line of design in everything that, it's, that, it's, that it represents our, our studio. And this is, this is, this is, the, this is the basement. Back. This is the basement uh, that it has a window to the to the pool. The stairs that goes to the second floor, but on the corner we like to play with the light, the light that shines in. And this this stairwell seems like a measured painting. Uh, like to design, we like to design all the handrails. 
So lots of the work that we do on, for example, on handrails are on site. Uh, they don't, they're, they're not on drawings. So we have to design it on site because uh, we don't, we, we, we have engineers, of course, for all the structural design, but for those, it's on where we're on, on the finishes and we prefer to do it ourselves, uh, design it structurally in the site, like to see if everything works. Uh, not for the main structure where you're going to be standing, of course, <laughs> but for handrails that did, you, you, you have to attach, add certain attachments and, and, and things that are, that, but on site. It's something that I, I love to do. I love to be on the, on the construction site. This is another project. This, we do a lot of mixtures of, of building systems with, where we have a concrete, we have a steel, we have wood. Uh, but all the, the joiner is what we are interested in, in, in too. And the, we like projects that are that connect each other uh, in a certain way that you don't see con weird connections. We always like to, to work on those. I think the transitions between one material and another is the key to a good to a good design. If they're just uh, like together, they, if they don't have an air separation between those, I don't, I don't, I don't. I, I don't know. I don't. Let me see if I can. I, don't know if I can see. Oh, wait. Anyway. Okay, we're talking alone. I can. What am I doing? Percent. Okay. Are you looking? Yeah. Okay. Then this is another project also here in Tijuana. I'll show you a brief of projects that are in the area and, and, and little interesting things about it. And then I'll talk about, about what we're doing with the school and the latest project we're working on that connects our studio, the school, and, and, and the vision that I have for, the, for what I think is the future for, for our firm. This is, and this one, we, we created a, a kind of like a production line of burning wood. <laughs> we did that on a, on, a, on a lot next to this house that it was empty lot. And we started burning all the wood. And, and the reason why we burned that wood, because we couldn't afford a, a, a higher a higher end, a, a more expensive, harder wood. Uh, so we found something that was very inexpensive, but the finish wasn't, I didn't like it a lot. So we burned it, burned it. And then, and then it, looked, it looked the way it looks right now there. And, and the good thing, that system, the Shosu Yuan, it's a typical system not from Japan. And, and most of you already know about that. Uh, but uh, you burn the wood and at the end it loses all the uh, uh, organic uh, elements that, that can turn into for the termites to burn, to eat it. And so, so for example, the, the, the fence that you see on a, on a, wood, on a brown wood there, it's, we, it's, it's the construction uh, we use for the formworks of the concrete. We just cut the, the boards, the, the two by fours and burned it a little bit and then grind it a little bit and then put oil. So at the end, that's the finish, but it's a recycled material from the construction. So at the end, we don't have that much waste and it's being reused as a main facade of the building. Uh, in, in all of our, our career, since, since I started uh, working mainly in San Diego, uh, the first years of my career, and then, then I, hold on, let me close this. Okay, this is a project we we did in LA uh, for a client that that there was a client that we designed a bar in San Diego a long time ago, like in maybe 2002, uh, and he called us uh, a very uh, friendly call because he's he's a he's a friend and and he called oh I'm doing this but I I never realized that it was a such an important job for us. Uh, and we designed it like pretty uh, easily uh, together with the client. Like uh, it was effortless. I, I can see, I can see that it was effortless. It was, everything flew very, very easily, the construction, everything. And at the end it turned out, it turned out to be a, a nice restaurant. We, 
we, we didn't knew it was going to be that important. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, this is a, a restaurant that it's on, on, the, on downtown LA on the Arts District. Uh, has water, uh, won several awards right now, the, a very good chef, Mei Lin. Uh, and during the process, they didn't even tell me how important was the chef. It was something that it was, and, and I was happy at the end that it turned out to a very nice restaurant that it, because it was not pretentious. We were not trying to pretend to do something, something very good for this chef or, so we never even knew who, who the chef was. It was more for my friend he went to the bar with, he had a chef already. So we had one meeting with the chef one day and she didn't talk that much. <laughs> And it was it was very very interesting process, but at the end we were very happy happy with it. And this is another another project we're working on Tijuana. It's been already uh, two years, two years. It's a, a residential project, but it's the, it's the largest house we have we have designed uh, in, in in our professional life. It's a a, a, a lot of nine. 1,900 square meters was so like 200,000 square feet. Oh. Yeah, 200,000 square feet. It's a big lot, but it's a very simple house in a in a way because it's it's only a two bedroom, uh, but it's it faces the the the, the whole view the, the skyline of, of the city of Tijuana, uh, and it's it's it, lots of concrete. We we have poured almost more than a thousand cubic yards of concrete. And it's been kind of like a master scene in, 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 in construction in regards to concrete and the detail, the amount of detail that this house, house has. Even though it ha it's a house that looks simple, uh, I think it's, it, it's been one of the hardest projects we have, we have designed it. And at the end, it looks very simple because it's one story house, but it's, but it's very complicated to build it. So, so for me, it's been a challenge. I've been there every day the last two years. That's been, that's why I haven't been that much connected to other projects. I've been working on this one and others that I'll, I'll be showing you. But the, in the construction process, I've been there every day. So it's something that I love to be on the, on the site. Uh, this is a photo we took yesterday uh, in the night. Uh, we don't have photos that much. I'll, I'll, I'll be sharing you once in, in our Instagram, uh, in, our web, in our website pretty soon will be, I think in about a couple of months, we should be finishing it out. And then other projects like this one, this is a residential project in, in Hillsburg in Dry Creek in Sonoma County. And it's a, a house that, that actually, we've been, we've been designing lots of houses that are second, second homes for, for people that like to relax. And, and in a lot of the program, on the way we design it, we always try to, to, to use it in a way that, that you experience the, the outdoors. This house is, is, is right there, it's still under construction. We are working right now on all the landscaping for, for this house with, a, with Hugo from Mexico City. Uh, and, and he's working all the, all, the, all the landscape. It's gonna be amazing all the, all the, I mean, the work that we're going to do on the on the outside too um, but it's a very simple house three four bedroom kitchen dining living on this side all facing in front of a vineyard and the wood that we utilize on this one it's 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 from from wine barrels uh, go back from wine barrels uh, that in sonoma all the 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 wine barrels used to be the large ones and the, when they changed those to to, stain, to stainless steel, uh, they, they, when they changed them to stainless steel, they, all the wood uh, got uh, into storages and, and, and then we went to a place where they wanted, they, they were reclaiming this type of wood. And so it was very interesting that uh, at, the, at the beginning, when, when they deliver all the wood, it has the, 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 the smell of, of, of wine on it, on, when it was on the house. So it's, it's, and it's an amazing look also because it has lots of texture. And these other projects are small projects that we have done in, in San Diego. This, this I, I wish I had put a photo. This is one of the small houses, the, the, the pitch roof that you see there. It's, it's one of the oldest houses in San Diego. It's in Pacific Beach. 
And I have a photo of that one with only about three houses in the whole, the whole area. You can see the bay, only like three houses. This is one of it. And when they asked me to design, they wanted to do a second story. And it is not a historic house because it doesn't have the characteristics on the timing for to be a historic house. But, but I decided to keep the, the, the existing structure and try to, to do a, a way of living that you live towards this tree that, it, that I thought it was amazing. So the, the little rooms that you see, that you see three rooms, those are the ones that were added, but, but you always get to them through the outside. So it's an outside living house and it has a, a studio, but it's also separate. So it's very interesting because these people, they have visits, for example, from their parents and they stay at the guest house. And then when he's working, he's working on the studio. And then when the wife is on the house with the kids, they don't, they don't interfere with each other, even though it's a very small, very small house. So right now we're working for this client on another house across the street on Archer, Archer Street in, in, in PV. Uh, that is, that, that it's a larger house, but they want the same configuration on, on how, how, to, how do you leave the house. So I don't think it's, sometimes it's about design, design, aesthetics, or it's always, it's always this, but, but I think more on, on, on try to think how people are gonna leave the spaces is, is what is, is important. This is the guest house that you see on the back. So the good thing is they're all, they are connected, but at the same time separated and they all have their bathroom. They, it's very, it's like little casitas in, in, a, in a small lot. So I started to liking that type of architecture that is, that is not pretentious, it's more like to try to understand how people live. This is another project we're working on. It's a pretty large one. I don't have this image right now in this presentation, but it's it's a remodel of the Palm Springs. It used to be the Wet and Wild Park in Palm Springs that most of you must know, being from San Diego, and a very classical place for for a wave pool. It used to be a small wave pool, and this is converting into a large wave pool with bars and and another pool. We design a restaurant. Uh, another restaurant, Cabanas, and it's a very interesting. You can go to to their their Instagram at Palm Springs Surf Club. Uh, it should be the, it's already under construction. They're doing tests on the pool, uh, and it's a it's a very very unique project. And and I'm very happy that, that James Willis uh, invited us to this this project because it really takes us out of the of the comfort zone because. We are not originally a interior design studio or a, so on this one we had to do a lot of interior work with the existing buildings, but I think the essence of what it used to be, we wanted to preserve and, but also we wanted to, to show something unique and different for a market that is not there. Uh, it, Palm Springs has their own clientele and type of people that visit, uh, but being so close to LA and being a place with that much of sun, it's a very uh, unique place to have a, a water park that is cool, that is different, that is for, for other type of people. So, so I'm very happy to be part of this and, and it's in a good, good stage right now in the construction. Another, another one is a hotel here in, El, in, in Valle Guadalupe that it's under construction too, that it's uh, like a very brutalist, but in certain way it has like little arches. So it's like an eclectic type of architecture that that takes you to, to a different perspective of, of when you go there, you don't know exactly where you are. You, you, you try to understand why is this type of architecture in, in a, a very, in Valle Guadalupe, for example. And also another thing that is important for this, for this project is that we, we previously have designed the other one that I'll show you that you must already see in the Encuentro Guadalupe project or Endemico used to be called. Uh, but we wanted to do something really different that it was more because this this site it was flat it was a flat site it was a flat site so this is photos of the construction uh, so you can see that it is super brutalist and and it's something that i kind of uh, i think Valle Guadalupe gives you the potential of doing whatever you want so it's a good place for experimentation uh, and I, I love doing things there. The project that I was going to show you at the end is also in Valle Guadalupe, and it's and it's something that it's a, a good experiment for, for, for us as as architects. 
Uh, we have never used arches on this one. We wanted to do arches, but at the same time, use it with formwork so that you can you can see that it's not a, a classical arch, but at the same time, it's and it was designed actually about three or four years ago. The construction has been very slow, uh, but it's some, right now it's it's very uh, it's lots of people are doing these arches and all their projects. But we did this uh, four years ago, and it was it was it was an interesting thing. Like, that I remember going to Querétaro and seeing all this, this aqueductos uh, with water and, 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 and it shows you history. It shows you history and, and, and being a, a, this, this area of Mexico, uh, all the north of Mexico, that we don't have that much of history. So, so trying to create this sense of history in, the, in, a, in a vacant land, it, it, it intrigues me. So what will it happen in 10, 20, or 30 years about this? What will they think it was from what age, from what type of, from what timing? So those are the questions that I'd like to, to ask myself when I design. I, uh, I like to be timeless. I like to be, so that's why in some of our buildings, we even design the furniture so that they, they, don't, they cannot connect us with a certain type of a certain era. So this is another one that, that we'll call this uh, find, finding a finding crease, we we'll call it, because it's a client that disappeared. We we did the presentation; he was very happy, <laughs> and then he never called back. So, <laughs> so I hope somebody knows him. Chris, where are you? <laughs> this is a project in Joshua Tree. Uh, if he doesn't decide to build it, I, I'm sure I, I'll like to build it somewhere else but because it's a very interesting project, lots of concrete, but the forms that we work on this, we did lots of of, of, of trying in this models in the site, 3D models to study the sun. Uh, but I think it's one of our, a very interesting fight for our studio because it, we're, we're playing with, with a lot of the form, form of it, and, and, but mostly the light. And, and the light, you know, you can play with that with software. You can do lots of things with software, different types of software. But it, we went more, we, went, we used software, but also we went to the site to get the heat, understand the, the site and see how the sun will go into the spaces. And what's going on with this? This is the same, oh, this is the wood for, for the house in Sonoma. Because I was preparing the presentation. Let's go. This is, okay, it's also it's part of the, of, the, of the house in Sonoma. It's a transition, transom window all the way to the sides of the house. This is the, the, the wood, the reclaimed wood. I'll present this house, which is it's a house in Tijuana. Uh, also on this one, we, it's called Casa Don Juan because on the, the street called Don Juan. It's not because it's a Don Juan the owner. And then this one, uh, it's an element of, of, of little cubes and, and wood and little cubes and elements, straight elements of concrete on the side that support an element that is built out of uh, steel and wood. So very simple. Uh, it doesn't have that much windows to the front. It's a, a, a shower window and one of the bedrooms, but mainly it's, it, it opens to the patio. It opens to the patio. The floor plan that we have here, it's a a two car garage, the entry, actually you enter through here and you enter to a patio. You can enter to the living, you can enter to the dining or whatever you want. And when you enter to the car, you enter to the kitchen here. But uh, we have always liked to, to discuss the, the entry to the houses. Some, sometimes people do uh, this major entry for the, for the guest, but then for the cars, they do something different. So. So this in this house was the question, which was the main entry? No? For me, I enter every day. For me, this is important. So I wanted a large door. And but also when you get visits, uh, I want them to feel that the entry is here. Like they already enter, even though it's outside, but it, they feel that they're inside. Okay. It has a basement here, a, a basement with a, an off home office and a little TV and a table. Uh, where uh, storage and the stairs, the stairs that go up here. And then this is the second story where you enter to these stairs, a master bedroom. This is the bed area and the closet and water closet and, and shower. And then two bedrooms on the front and a TV room here and a, a laundry room. 
So this are the this is the space. Uh, this, we played with concrete, then steel, and then the rest is, is a steel construction. So it's a mixture. We consider the concrete walls as part of the foundation, and then a house that is built out of steel. Okay. So on this, we designed a table. We saw this furniture. Some of the furniture we 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 like designing uh, the iron work. We like to play with the with the the, 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 the handrails to make it a more like a statement in into playing with uh, designing all these handrails. We have always very very intrigued about iron work. Uh, this is a space. It's a double height um, with mezzanine and all steel and uh, these are more photos right now the space is already grown all the plants are already uh, so very very lots of plants everywhere but it's a house that lives to the patio it lives a lot to the patio okay the stairs takes you up but the supports uh, as i told you that uh, we we start building the stairs but then we starting adding supports wherever we 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 need it okay structurally and then and as as different as in the us as opposite to the us here you don't have that much regulations here i know you right there this wouldn't be allowed if you have lots of handrails and but we do also price there and with the price we do there we we use we use the codes for that and, and this one we don't Okay, so this is a separation. This is a property line actually on the back of this wall. So the neighbor is here. So to block the view from the neighbor, we we created this wall, but at the same time gives you privacy. You don't you're not looking at the at the neighbor, but but you are looking at your like here also on the this has a little terrace. Um, okay, this is the one I told you. It's already all lots of plants there. Okay, this is from the master bedroom. Master bedroom. And then I'll show you this. I know you, you might seen already this project because this is the project that actually, I think it puts us on the map as a, as a design studio. It was published several times in different magazines. Uh, but I, I like to show it because it represents a lot of what we do. We try to, to do a, architecture that is very efficient into into the construction systems and the decision of making this project uh, as a as a prefabricated uh, project it was not only because it was cool or it was original at that time because it was uh, they hired us on 2007 for this project uh, but I, I think it was mainly because we since we we do construction we we knew that if we we have all the workers there they will destroy the nature of that site of that beautiful site uh, like that if if they don't if, if it, so so if we prefabricate the most that we can and take the workers only for for the mounting of the structure uh, it'll be less less problems uh, lots of, like this one uh, i like to talk about this one because it's a, a wine cellar that it, we we did a hole on the on the rock granite and, and then and then just did all the iron work on site and it's an iron i don't know if you're, you're looking at my on my uh, screen you'll see that that I, that the metal it, the round metal it, it goes from one point to another so it's like a round boom, boom. so and I remember when I was uh, in school, I, I had a screensaver from uh, from from uh, that used to be like steel tubes, like moving from PC, not from Mac uh, at that time. So that was kind of the inspiration for this one. So it's kind of funny to see something really uncool to be to become something that it's that it's that is in a in a different different perspective of of, of place. Uh, I'll go a, a little fast because I know we're, we have 15 minutes and I like to talk about other, other thing that is very important. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, and then the, the materials are always important, the, the colors 
of the materials uh, embed on the on the nature. Uh, we selected the materials materials that are that that get sold with the time that have the same condition as a as a plant that in the, the uh, winter it's one color and the summer it's another color and in spring it's another color. So the, the, the structures change in colors during time. And, and we like to design lots of elements from, from uh, this uh, uh, closet. It is not a closet, it's actually just a, a steel tube to hang the, the hangers for the clothing. But because we question ourselves, what is, what is a clothing, uh, a wardrobe? What is, it, what is the purpose of it? Is it it's for, to, for clothing not to get a, a dust. So in this case, this is a, a, a place that you're gonna use it for one night or two nights. So the clothing is not gonna be standing there. So, so try to minimize everything that you, that, try to take out everything that you don't really need like checking the box and taking everything that is not needed and just using whatever. Like, for example, the support for this table that is on the, on the left where the bottle is, the support becomes the, the, the light, light bulb. So it's a structure, but at the same time has another function. So try to question ourselves what is the door for the door on the side of this cabinet on the one on the entry door. This, it has a, a little knob there to, to open it. If the door is on the side, not on the front, because the, equipment that is inside there has a different different dimensions and it's so it's uh, on how do if you question yourself how do you build this thing normally to if you build a box you you have doors in front that's the typical but it, when you start to putting the function on it, it it changes so so that's what i like to do I like to question our, uh, myself on everything if you really need a, a if you really need a a, a shade for the for the lamp, even though right now it's very easy used everywhere, like just to put uh, this Edison light bulbs. But at that time in 2007, it was more like to try to, to, to see what was the minimum that we can build and still be a, a building that is, that is cool. Uh, when we built the, the, this uh, uh, pool, uh, the original design that we did in, on, on the, on the computer was different but on, this, on site we had to design it differently because we started to uh, find stone when we were digging the, for the pool so the shape started sh it started shaping uh, with the nature so that's why it feels very natural uh, because it's it's embedded uh, on the nature and and the nature responded to us like the, it, it showed us what it needed to be we feel that we didn't do that much on that on that project because it was already lots of most of the every all the plants were already there, so we're just going going towards towards that. Okay, this is a, a project inside that project, which is a, a residential house that actually on this one, well not this one, the one on the back, we built it in, in four weeks uh, because we needed to. We had some visits that they were going to very important visits. They wanted another room, so we had to design it and build it in four weeks. It was very very interesting. It sounds like incredible now, but we're working two shifts and designing on an iPad and then starting construction at the same time. That's, that's, those are the things that I, I love about being in Mexico compared to when, when I was uh, doing jobs there in the US. So this all is still prefabricated uh, project. That idea, okay trying to follow up the chat and talking. I don't think it's a good idea for me because I am, I cannot think in in English, I speak in English and, th and be thinking something else. I'm not multitasking on that, sorry. So on this one, uh, we have a, uh, uh, this is a mass, this is the one we built in, in four weeks. Uh, we started by the rock. And from there, we started shaping the, the whole building to be able to fit it inside there. Uh, the rock started as a partition between the shower and the, we wanted like a partition in between, between the, we, we thought it was sexy to have a bed and then this partition and then you could see a little bit to the shower. So we decided that the rock was going to be the partition. And from there, uh, then there we started to, to designing everything. Okay, so, so this is the, one of the views we wanted the house to disappear 
Okay, so glass will be the first base material. We wanted the, the, the house to have a structure, so, uh, so steel was the best material. So, so the design decisions is not aesthetics. It's more structure, uh, purpose, and then we go to, like for example, we need shade here. It's very thin. You see on the top of the roof is very thin. It's just like two inches uh, because we just need shed, but <laughs> shade. But on this, on this, uh, on 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 this area where where it has the habitable space, we need insulation. So right there is like 12 inches because it has insulation. But how do you disappear? We will paint everything black so it disappears. So so at the end it looks very thin, but it it, it solves the problem of, of insulation also, term, thermal insulation. So being doing all this uh, as architect, as a person, as a Tijuanense, a guy living in the border from for several years, or 47 already, 46. And I thought uh, that what would, what am I gonna do uh, about it? I'm I'm doing I'm doing my own buildings for private pri private clients. Uh, so I want the the city to blow. I want the city to be a better city. So so I I got this idea of 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 how what if what if we uh, uh, it, it start it is school of architecture where we we can learn uh, by uh, ideas and with this school and doing everything by hand because I, I think the way the way of learning uh, uh, the way you learn it's, it's when you really do something uh, you can they can teach you lots of things but when you do it yourself it's a lot of, lot of learning so so I'll, I'll just uh, this is part of the students that we have here, uh, and it, it's a, a a group of 14 students believed on us uh, on five years ago, and we founded the Escuela Libre de Arquitectura uh, on the on a building that it was abandoned in 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 in, in, in La Zona Centro in downtown Tijuana in the red light district, actually one block away from the red light district. So so one of the th main things. It's that they need to at least one time they have to do uh, the job that a, a worker does, uh, and they have. But every week they have to go and see it, and see it. Actually, today I just had our first from 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 COVID. We haven't uh, done any of the of the visits, site visits, and today we decided to go in small groups and did a construction visit. So so uh, the school is not the building. The school is the city. So uh, friends of ours that have a, a, a shops of carpentry or iron workers, they collaborate with us and take our students to their shops and, they, and their students learn from, from them directly. So uh, they have a, a, sh a laser cutter so that they can do their own uh, models in, in, the, in the building. The building is it's a two-story building. Um, but it's, it's sufficient for, for the amount of students we have because, because we also have classes outside in a program that also have a, a 30 weeks from the program. They have to be working with, a, with an architect uh, in the city and outside the city, nationally and internationally. We have sent students, uh, Fernando and Sara here, Sara have been to, to Colombia, uh, Argentina, and uh, Mexico City, Fernando, Mexico City, New York, and Paris, uh, and then lots of lots of different ones. Uh, and then uh, also we appreciate lots of the work of the workers, uh, what they do for us as architects, because we have a we can design, but if without them, uh, the, without them we cannot the the price wouldn't be built. So. So we always tell them we appreciate their work. We 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 believe that architecture is a craft. There are the, to be an ar a good architect, you have to build and you have to build a lot of buildings to be able to learn as if you were a carpenter, and to be a to do a good a good a good uh, uh, piece of furniture, you have to practice a lot. So I think in architecture it's the same thing. We have to we have to do that. Uh, we do lots of site visits. This is uh, all the school with the Valle Guadalupe. This is on the school. Uh, Fernando doing some models. 
uh, lots of the details. Sometimes you learn about doing details. Uh, they, they, they let you know how the detail it is. But, but if you see it on the site and then you draw it out on the site, it's different. You learn it in a different way. Uh, from different scales of project, uh, from different scales of project, they have to go see. The good thing about Tijuana is that it's in a, in a, in a boom in construction. So, so we have different options of going from small projects to large projects. So they can see a variety of, because it's different, it, it, it works differently, the architecture, the construction works differently on different scales. So, so lots of it, lots of it, it's, it's by that, doing on the site, on the site. And, and the way we do it is that we have the architecture studio, the construction company, and the school. So we always try to put everything together so that they met the timings match so that they can see a student that goes for school for three years. At least they see two constructions from zero to, to the end. And, and for me as an architect that I've studied in another program, another type of school that I only went to a site visit for one time in the whole program, it, it, this is much, it makes more sense for me because I think it's, is the way of learning because you cannot start learning when you finish school. You have to start learning from the, the first day. Today we had students for, uh, from the first day, they are already enrolled in the new program for, for this uh, quarter. Uh, they're online, but today we, we, had, we made small groups and we took them to the construction. I think it's important, even though with this condition we have, it's, uh, it's, it's very important for them to have that experience. Uh, this is photos of the students, like uh, using the level, using machines for, for, for cutting, for sanding, for bending, bending rebars. They, we also, before COVID, we used to do events on the roof terrace of the, of the school for lectures. Uh, and right now with the uh, COVID, uh, what, we, what we did, this is another thing, but now with COVID, we did a, like a marathon, like 20, 21 lectures, 21 weeks. Uh, and, and the lectures were amazing. You can go to our website, to our YouTube from the school or our web or our web page for the, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know the, the web page from the schools, ella.edu.mx, ella.edu.mx. Uh, and we have all the lectures, 21 lectures from very good architects, uh, world-known world architects uh, for in talking are very informal talks. And we open them to the public, not only for our students, we open them publicly. And we are doing that. The website is right there. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and the, the, and all, everything is, 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 is free and it's open. It's open. Okay. Uh, this is an event. One of our students is a great composer for music, electronic, and uh, Grenda is his name. He's playing there at, at the rooftop of our school. Uh, we like to encourage our, our, the people that are creative to, to continue doing what they love, because I think to be a good architect, you have to have hobbies. You have to have a passion about other things. You cannot be just loving architecture. Uh, I think I think to be a good architect, you need to learn about life. You need to learn about other things that are not architecture. Uh, this is more photos of the construction, and then this is another project. We're almost almost run out of time, but I'll go real quick. This is a this is a a bar that is to be on the Avenida Revolución, and 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 our students found this place like this. And they, and with a project from the school, they it took them through three months and they had to, to what, with whatever they found on the site, uh, create an event and create all the, the installations for, to, to create, to be able to use this space as a, a habitable space for a two-day event. And, and they didn't have electricity, they didn't have uh, machinery, they didn't have water and they had to work like that with all the wood they found on the site they had they cut it without uh, without machines and they started creating this with with uh, Seth Sullivan uh, an artist a local artist uh, that teach that class 
they had to start building all these structures with whatever scrap materials they had there. So it was part of the class, but at the same time, you have to build something with it. You have to get a, a sponsorship from painting companies like Comex, and they give them paint and they use it in a different way uh, to make, make the, with the space creative. They, at the same time, there were events on the school uh, for, for different types of, of classes, of classes from building guitar pedals to to ceramics, to different different types of, of things. Because the school is is not only class, it's architecture, but it also has classes of different things. And even in the program, we have electronic music and architecture, the connection between music and, and architecture. That Ramona Mesco, it's part of our students. Ramona Mesco is, is, is a well-known artist uh, uh, from Bostich is his name uh, as an artist, and he's, he's part of the Norte Collective from Tijuana. You must have heard of that. Uh, this is our photos from the day. All the scrap materials that are here, uh, they cover it at the end with wood, so that it feels like so they, they have a, their own concept, concept of building all this. But at the same, but at the end, they invited they invited people. Uh, lecturers from Colombia, from, from Cambridge, from different parts of, of Mexico or, or other parts, and, 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 and did a, a, a talk. Uh, Sebastián Mariscal, which is an architect from Mexico City, but he had a, his office in, in San Diego. He's a good friend, and he came also. Libre is, 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 is the name of the school, free. So Kenji, this is a very interesting guy from 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 Monterrey, Nuevo León, is doing developments in a very interesting way for, it's it, the way they do it, it's, it do, they do they like 200 houses, but it's not not in a, they don't sell, they, they sell a, a shares of that project. Let's say you're not buying a house, you're buying a share of this community of 200 houses. So it's very, very interesting thing, but, and they're being super successful. And it's very different the way they're doing it. This is the space after after the they converted into a place for lectures, and this is the last project I'm going to show you. Uh, this is this is called Villas de Gracia. It's uh, in Valle Guadalupe, and it's two houses. But the interesting thing about this is, is, is it becomes like a, a thesis for one of our students that work that that have been worked with us also and have studied architecture at our, at our school. Um, it's it's in the same property as Encuentro Guadalupe on the back, and and this is the site. There is uh, Sara, myself, and I thought it was I think it was was my son. Um, but the idea of this is to build if, if for for one of our students to to uh, be participant on the design and also be uh, bu building it. Uh, I only go one time once a week. I've, I've been going every day to the other side that I show you, but on this one I go only once a week, and she has to figure it out uh, how to make this this thing happen. She's Sara, and did you see in front of the picture? These are the hotel, and on the back we're building those two projects. And these are developments projects that we started doing for rental rental uh, units for as a hotel or Airbnb, and and. And it's a very interesting because uh, all the, the we're we're proving that our system works. Like we're finishing our school, we, you have to be able to to build, not only to design, to build. Uh, from starting to knowing how to how to support the structure, how how how, how to cut the the, the granite uh, to be able to start building without electricity, without water, in a very remote location, uh, reusing the stone that we cut for the foundations and using as, as, as terrazzo floors for the house. Uh, so we don't have to bring materials from other way, but we reuse the ones that are there. And, and this is, I think it was around January, maybe February. And this is this is a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is this. There are two houses there, and and this is this is the second one. But everything works. 
uh, this, this, everything works through the stones and, and the rocks and the boulders, we call it, you call it, I guess. So, so nothing was designed 100% when we started construction. It was, I guess, we had a, a 3D model of what we wanted. We did a, a, a scan with the drone to be able to understand the topography, what is rocks, what are uh, dirt, and what was uh, uh, plants. And we were able to do everything in computer, but then lots of the decisions uh, was like discovering, uh, as you were anthropologists, you were discovering, you found this rock that it turns on the outside, what do you do there? Do you use it, do you, uh, but mo most of, we kept all the, all the rocks, of course, we didn't want it to move because it's difficult and it's a logic to, to do something that you don't, that it's, it gets you an effort that you don't really, you don't really need to, okay? So that, that's why you see this little little uh, retainings is for the, just we just wanted to be able to have plants there, so we retain it so you can have little dirt there and then have the plants going down. Uh, you see, it's in the middle of nowhere, so it's a little difficult. It was very very difficult. One of the dif most difficult. Who, who provides the funds for the prize? Or? No, on the on this one, it's our, ourselves. We provide ourselves the, the funds for the project to be able to to achieve this beautiful. Okay, so so these are particular projects that we we do it as a development developments. So one of the ideas is to to have all this uh, infrastructure to be able to to do interesting projects because because if you're not uh, you need to be successful to continue to be successful. So, so I think it's, it's something important for us to be able to, like I'm staying at the other house that it's, I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I'm working every day on the other construction house. It's one of our largest projects to be able to get money, to be able to do something else. But I, but I can, if, if I will, if I wanted, I would love, I would have loved to build my, this house, which is a personal project, but at this, same times, if I don't do other things, I cannot build this. So, so I have to to make a, a, a this connection, trust in our, our students, and to be able to make this this uh, unity or this teamwork uh, bigger and bigger. So I think that's the way to change to really change something, um, to really really change something in the city, the, little by little. Because it's it, without the, the the funds, also it's. Architect, the problem with architecture compared to other, other like, let's say graphic design, the elements are a little bit easy, least expensive than, than a building. A building is very, muy, muy caro, very expensive. These are photos of the project. I think we're running out of time. We're at 310. I think we can, I don't know if, about the questions and answers, but uh, these are photos of the, the project. I think this project represents what we're doing. The, the why we are doing what we did and it's like a proof that a system of learning by doing and learning by seeing it's very important i think it's it's the way to learn is the way to learn uh, so i don't know i think that's this is the this where it is right now i hope soon uh, we'll have some photos of 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 the finished product we reused all the 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 formwork that we used to support when we build the roof and and it converted into the floors the uh, walkways from one point to another we cut the wood and then we put it as if it was adocreto or okay so this is this is the way it's turning out should be ready by next year by december almost by december and and well, I just want to thank you for for taking the time to listen to our 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 presentation. Uh, I like to thank in the name of everybody that believed in the project that we are doing because it's it's a, a, a some people call me and oh do a talk about this and but at the end it, there's all these people that believed in us and and it's not an easy task. There is lots of from teachers that help us educate our students
from the student that didn't went to an, a, 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 another school that it's already been there for several years and that they decided to go to our school and to try something different. And, and I think that's what is Tijuana all about. Tijuana, it's about risk. The people that comes to Tijuana comes with the idea of exploring, with the idea of some come with the idea of crossing the border. They stay here and they decided to stay here. Uh, and that's why the population from Tijuana is from all, all from everywhere. And my, my dad is from, from Mexico City. My mother is from Sonora. So I was born here. So it's, it's something very interesting that I love. I love being a Tijuanense. And, and, and I love being part of this uh, met metropolis that it's, it's both uh, San Diego and Tijuana because it's, it's, it's the last four, four months or three months that I haven't been able to cross is, I think, I think we're gonna be, if we stay like that for a longer time, I think we're, we're missing a lot because for me, I think uh, for both parts, uh, I think we need each other. Even though it sounds like Mexico can say, nah, we don't need that. And, and, and US can say, no, oh, we don't need them either. But at the same time, uh, being living here all my life, uh, we're missing a lot if we're not together, really. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, for I don't know what's the process for questions and answers. I don't think if, if, if we have time, but uh, if somebody has a question, uh, I'll be happy to to answer it. Hmm. What are there is one question there. I'll, I'll jump into three questions because so, I don't want to lose time for others. What are the challenges of being born in Tijuana, also studying there, and where wanting to practice architecture in San Diego and the US, besides regulations and, of course, speaking English? Well, uh, besides the, <laughs> this, the challenges, well, I guess, I guess uh, financially first. Uh, financially would be one of the, the, the reasons why people don't go to study in the U.S. if they cannot afford it. Uh, I, I, an example for myself: when I was I study architecture in Tijuana in Iberoamericana, and then and then and, and it was a summer that I wanted to to go study uh, summer class at SciArc, and I remember they sent me the quotes. I I remember at that time I, I used to to earn my money by by doing uh, uh, being a DJ on parties. So, but uh, they wanted to, for us to pay, to, well, I think at that time, I remember pretty well, it was $3,000 for the summer. Maybe for now it's not that much, but, but it was, for me, it was kind of frustration not being able to study there. But at, 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 the, same point, at the same time, I'm, I'm happy that, 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 that you have a, a, 
sometimes life is like that. You have to decide what you do and 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 those decisions what makes you what you are. And 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 I'm, I so the question for you is what will be the, the challenges? I think financially mainly mainly the language of course you can learn it but 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 if you cannot pay for for a private school in the US it's, it's much much more different. <laughs> uh, for sure from Katrina. Tijuana has such an interesting vibe. I love crossing the border at least a couple of times per year. Mexico might this will be the best. Okay, that's not a question. Good. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, what's the project? What's dream project you hope to complete in the next day? Okay. I think the thing is that I, 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 the dream project I was talking about, I think it's, it's the way I, wa I wanted to see the city uh, different. Uh, I know, I know Tijuana, it's very eclectic and it's, and it's in the chaotic aspect of it. It's what, what makes it Tijuana what it is. But I think there's lots of opportunity on, and, and lots of challenges with the government. And I think the, the dream thing that I would like to have is, is that the funds from the government get applied. Uh, it's a very difficult uh, task, but, but you need to have a, because there is lots of needs for uh, urban planning and, and for the city. And, and I don't see it happening. And that's, I think that's one of the goals. And, and the way I see as a dream project, as a personal dream project, is, is to, to share that, that uh, need for that, for that and, and share it with the new generation so that they, so they can help push to have to make a difference. So, so I, think, I think that's a dream project. Like when I, was, when I, when I said that, it's like one example is this, this student, Sara, that, that decided to, to believe in what we do. And now she's, she's very young. She already built this in a very remote location. And, and I'm sure she's going to do something interesting. And, 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 and she's tough and she's going to be doing something interesting for the city. And, she, and the way we're uh, teaching them is they need to love their city and they, they will, I want them to stay here. I don't want them to learn and then go to work to somewhere else. I want them to, uh, to work in our city. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very, very much. I, I, cause I know there are, it's planned and it's already 318. So I would just like to thank everybody for, for being here with, with me talking and it's a little weird that I don't see talking to everybody else, but I hope everybody enjoyed. <laughs> okay.